I'm Alex Hirsch, and I hate candy corn. It's gross. Hi, I'm Alonso Ramirez Ramos. Uh, I was a storyboard artist on this episode. Hi, I'm Matt Brawley, and I was also a storyboard artist on this episode. Woo! Um, this is... So, on Gravity Falls, we start with what we want to do, and then we think of a justification for it later. Here, we wanted to do a Halloween episode, so I just wrote this little intro where he's like, Wouldn't you know it? It's now! I have a calendar! And then, it, and then we just say, yep, they've got this, because... We love Halloween episodes. I love Halloween. The fact that the show takes place in the summer, we're just like, we're just going to excuse this. Um, this sequence was all boarded by Matt. Yes. I think probably with help from Mark Garcia. I think actually. that's, oh, yeah. yes. yes. I think Mark did some great work on this. Amazing um, work. And uh, we, in that quick pan where the kids are running by in the wheelbarrow, there's a bunch of masks on the wall. Those are all caricatures of the crew. You'll yes. see a lot yes, of us yes, 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 yes. in there. Um, this episode originally had a different uh, opening. Um, the, 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 little, the little bit of story before the theme song on a TV show is called The Cold Open. Um, and sometimes it's just, it, it sets up the story. Other times it's a bit of texture. Um, originally there was a scene where Stan runs into the kid's room and he makes his own face melt off in front of them and scares them to introduce them to Summer Ween. Um, but it felt to me like there's so much more to Halloween that we were missing, and so I kind of late in the game, I think I added extra script pages for this intro, just to see them all. To me, so much of Halloween is the anticipation. What what made that super real was the super tired store clerk. Yeah. <laughs> a, a poor teen that has to work through Halloween at a Halloween store, which just has to be the worst. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's messing with the costumes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Tossing yeah, yeah, yeah. things There's around, like and they just like... everywhere. I think what I love about that scene is in the shortest amount of time, it just shows you the entire Pines family is being just fun and yeah, ridiculous. They're a menace. They're, they're, ridiculous. they're a mess. <laughs> yeah. Like, Seuss is so enamored with these talking heads. Dipper and Mabel are having too much fun. Back. Stan is terrorizing children, stealing, using smoke bombs, and paying with Stan bucks. We very quickly are able to give you a sense of pretty much everyone um, before the story even begins. Oh, man. those uh, who, Alex, who came up with the, uh, the watermelon jack-o'-lanterns? I know. It's so iconic. It's the really... jack-o'-melons? That's a great question. I'm not sure. That might have been... That might have been a Tim or Zach idea. Um, I think it really painted the aesthetic for what Summer Wing is. It's really, I feel yeah. like it kind of makes it all work. Yeah, it makes it all work. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's you a, know. one image that makes you say, this is an absurd concept, but, but okay, I buy it. summer, yeah. sure. Pumpkins, and, uh, watermelons instead of pumpkins, good enough. I put the knife on that watermelon. Um, this was our, our art director, uh, Ian, did a great job of just the color on this. Um, and this loser candy, this was something that uh, me and Mike added to the story kind of late in the game where we were just looking for a really specific uh, <laughs> Mr. Adequate Mr. Bar. Adequate Homework and candy, that's my favorite. <laughs> Gummy <laughs> chairs? <laughs> Whose joke is that? I think that's a Zach Pia's joke, and I think the right. way that you boarded it sold it. Uh, it's so good. Mabel's... Um, I like that they don't have a, a cover or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're Come just on. out there. Uh, Mabel's sweater, I think, is meant to be colored like Freddy Krueger. I think that was the reference. Oh, cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, that's really That was yeah. kind of a, a specific didn't know that. I remember something reference. really fun about this episode was deciding what were going to be the costumes yes. for the characters, and we went through a lot of options. That was... That was very difficult. Um, I remember in an original draft of the script, I think Dipper was dressed as like, I think the first draft written by a uh, writer, Zach, Dipper was in this like old timey, he was an entire ship, like a naval ship, like something <laughs> he had spent like weeks on. Like the idea was like Dipper cared so much. Um, and Mabel had a bunch of different, really funny, different ideas. Oh, but because anything would right, be just anything so works great. Yeah. I remember thinking that like thematically, I really wanted to be Dipper and Mabel are two things that go together. Yeah. Um, and because well, that's what it's all about. That right, right. Right. And like even though Dipper would not agree to be a peanut normally, I think Mabel <laughs> would be like, "We're peanut butter and jelly. We're peanut butter and jelly." And Dipper would say, "Sure, fine, I guess." And then he'd see the costume and be like. Good God, I'm a little baby peanut. Right. I'm trying to impress this cool girl who's driving off to this cool party. Right. Um, but I feel like any other day he would have done it and be fine with he it. He would have but gone. It was just like his mind was on one day now. Yeah. He definitely would have done it um, inside the house. I think right, Dipper wouldn't have worn the peanut. Outside <laughs> oh, of the house. no. The, the, uh, the Stan. Stan uh, is Herman Munster. Stan is great. Oh. Candy, is candy is candy. Uh, candy is candy. Uh, which one of you guys designed Mabel's. Uh, Jam. Jelly. I feel well, like we did it together, you know. Like it's we possible. Were... I feel like Alonzo, you did the 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 heavy lifting on those two. I might have done the stand. It's the, all kind of a blur. Those are. It's yeah. such a cute. I did I definitely it. worked on the peanut head for <laughs> Dipper. Yeah, I really. Yeah, the peanut head is tough. When I wrote peanut je- butter and jelly, I had no idea what it would look like. And Mabel is so cute with that little <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. strawberry. Well, and, it, and in Dipper's defense, it's not a great look. <laughs> the peanut right. is kind of like it but has this kind of brainiac, you know. 
know what I mean. But it like, didn't serve two functions, right? Like, just be ridiculous enough. Like, you get why Dipper's feeling this way. But, like, you know, it also looks fun. But yeah, also yeah. be kind of cute. Okay, so um, cute. we should just say, I mean, the submarine monster, I don't know how you guys feel. It's, like, one of my favorite Gravity Falls creatures. He's yeah, awesome. Me yeah. too. Um, this episode was instantly loved when it came out, and I think it's because it delivers on the promise of the show actually being scary. It's actually um, scary. Like, there's, it was. I, I figured like this character should have should play it straight. Like there should be nothing jokey about him until the big reveal, so that the joke is. I think it was when we thought of the phrase "trick or treat or die" that the episode finally worked. Uh, it was yes. like, okay, like we've seen a lot of trick or treating episodes, but what if you were forced to trick or treat and a monster's literally yeah. going to eat you? Right. Um, this was a great design uh, by a character designer, Chris Houghton. Chris Houghton, um, yeah. He I'd literally said, became a storyboard uh, artist on the I, show. I, yeah. I want him to feel like he's sort of like uh, the scarecrow. Um, he's sort of like uh, the no face from Spirited Away. Kind of want to yeah. mix these things together. Um, and, and this Gorney, tell us who this is. Gorney. Uh, uh, Zach Pye is one of our writers added had the idea of a kid oh, named like, Gorney which always made me laugh because it's barely even a name and the only reason he's there is to show the stakes so like in storytelling you're constantly trying to create high stakes very early on in the show so that you care about what happens and you're trying to show what happens if you don't if, if you lose so the kid shows up and immediately gets eaten so you know for the yeah, rest of this episode trouble. I might actually watch someone get eaten when he says trick or treat or die. I'm like, yeah, Gorney's gone. <laughs> and I love that we care instantly about Gorney, even though we haven't seen him ever, but he's great. We miss him. And uh, yeah, I love the stories where it's actually really scary, but the characters' reactions are really funny. Yes. Like and that's such a nice contrast. That to me really is the spirit. And like we, we were talking, um, we've been doing a bunch of different commentaries today. We were talking about the tone of Gravity Falls. Um, we recently did the commentary for uh, Dipper versus Manliness. And I talked about how I always was frustrated with that episode because I felt sure, like this, sure. this might be fun, but it's not the tone of Gravity Falls. This episode is the tone of Gravity gotcha, Falls. Gotcha, like, gotcha. It's funny, it's nostalgic, but it's also genuinely scary at times. It's got a role for all the kids. It's got social stakes and it's got monster stakes. This one has some pretty heavy stuff about growing up too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, I, I remember, uh, I, I felt a little conflicted about that because I felt I'd seen some uh, some holiday specials <laughs> that are about the same theme of, you know, one character. Because most holiday specials are about a character who doesn't like the holiday, right? Sure. Every Christmas special is like, I don't like Christmas. Right, I right, don't appreciate right, right. Rosh Hashanah. I do love it now. <laughs> and so, like, to me, we got away with it, A, by inventing a fake holiday. So it's like, you don't have enough summer ween spirit. And Dip is like, what, the, what is this? Right, <laughs> So right. you kind of side with them a little bit. You're like, it's just something they made up. Um. But the idea that like that general idea of Dipper's growing out of it and Mabel isn't is oh no the runner what the whole the series runner is with yeah, the kids that come in <laughs> Stan trying to scare these kids man oh, he also has some self doubt oh there's a horrifying <laughs> shot at the end of this episode with Stan so this scene of Stan's face melting this was originally how the episode began oh my Stan gosh. doing this trick on the kids um, I don't remember where this idea of these two disaffected kids who are unscarable came from but. We always like it when Stan's greatest rivals are children, yes, like Gideon. Yes, like yes. Stan is so full of himself. It works so well, yeah. That yes. it's really funny to see him so foiled. Kyle, no. Oh no, yeah, that's yeah. convincing, Stan. Yeah. <laughs> um, these are also great design. I think Alonzo, you 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 boarded the first look at these kids, didn't right? You? Because I was working on Act Two at the time, and they come up there, so we yes. have to work in tandem. And this is a great example of like how we have to communicate. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we had fun figuring out what everyone would dress up as. We know Blubs and Derlin love nothing more than each other. So they <laughs> Alonzo, is this you? Uh, not yet. Okay. Um, this, this line of Mabel saying, Dipper, you're f taking the fun out of Trick or Treat or Die. And Dipper says, I'm trying to take the die yeah, out of yes. Trick or Treat or Die. Solid, solid. Um, that is their, that's their characters in a nutshell. Oh, yeah, gosh. <laughs> And I like this episode where Dipper thinks he can have both things. Yes. Like, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I'll yes. have our lives. Yes. I'll go to the party. Yes. I can do everything. Yes. Yes. But like, yes. no, Dipper, you just have to yes. choose. You have to make a choice. <laughs> um, these things that Lazy Susan says, squeegee, yeah. ant farm. Yes. Yes. All improvisation yes. by uh, By the way, this Jennifer is, I love Lazy Susan. This is really accurate. Like, I went trick-or-treating once and I wasn't in costume. And people are loath to give you candy. <laughs> if you're, no, they'll be like, get out of get here, out. you little scam. You didn't try. Yeah, yeah. Even if with your when you're with friends that are dressed up. 
Do you remember uh, how old you were when you stopped trick or treating? Um, I think the last time I went was in high school. I think I was a high school junior, and oh, someone you lasted was like, long. "Yeah." Someone pointed next, pointed to my friend and was like, "That's a man." Like, you know what I mean? And that was it. That was the <laughs> end. <laughs> uh, Al- Alonzo, do uh, you remember? Um, I didn't oh, used to. Go oh, to you never went trick or treating? No. Is it, trick or treating not a thing in Mexico? No, it is. We just, I just didn't do it. You just didn't do it. Yeah, but oh, they man. dress up. For uh, costume parties and stuff. I, I think mine probably would have been. I was a samurai pizza cat one year. Oh, that's good. Yeah, You're a samurai good. pizza that's cat. Good. Yes, that that's was, good. <laughs> I love that. That was amazing. Dude, I had I'm pretty really nerdy costumes. Okay, this is. Where I, I, I think I, this is the switch. This is. The yeah, switch. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got it. You got it. The switch of uh, um, board. So, so this is where we split it in half. Okay, so this is oh, where this is definitely joke. This is definitely Alonzo's uh, section because that exp- <laughs> a Stan face like that nobody could draw a Stan's face like that. Also, w- watch Waddles when he falls out. He does the cutest little walk away. Like nobody drew a cuter Waddles than Alonzo. Look at that little. Ah, uh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> like, thank you. Oh, oh this, I love this. We, we gotta know, that cat. the network was scared that this was going to be too scary. So like, that, we had that's to, how you know it's good. We had to make some adjustments to make it not too scary. I love this when he looks in the mirror. <laughs> what Stan. happened to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's it's great. So pathetic. I love Stan's kind of existential crises. Crises. There it is. That's such a good, that's uh, such a good reveal. That's great. It's um, great. And um, Candy's line here is great. I'll make you internet famous. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so good. That uh, Matt, did you board that section where he looks at his wrist? I don't think so. Oh, just because no. that hand didn't look yeah, like an Alonzo is, hand to me. Yeah, that is your drawing. Yeah. Like what? How? That's my little name. It had to be an Alonzo. Uh, it had to be a probably um. Oh, the reason uh, this biker we call him Bats Biker because it says bats on his tattoo because it originally said stab. The network had a problem with it, so, so we just bats. flipped it around and made it. Bats. Good, 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 good. <laughs> um, th- this Candy, um, yes, this yes, joke was joke. added very late. late yeah, I can't automatic. remember why that was added. I think we just wanted Candy to have an extra line. Did cause... they already do the twins thing? That's like one of my. Oh, they just did things. it. Oh, I love twins. That. Um, the background team did such a wonderful job, and this, this is such is atmosphere great. here. This is great. The fact that it's it's foggy, it's I getting love the darker. time lock. Like the time is, you can see people blowing out their lanterns. It's yeah, really great. So right. another one of the things that you're, you do when you try to create stakes in storytelling is a you try to show what would happen. Worst case scenario, you try to take create a ticking clock. Yeah. So in this that's version, when the last summerween melon is blown out, that's when you will be eaten. Gives you something so you can track the story um, and allows you to feel tension when it's too late. This is a real, real cute boarding, them hugging each other. Yeah, I remember you telling us uh, that, you know, don't be afraid to have characters interact with each other. Mm. And like, they, you know, they touch each other's faces and they're like hugging. And, you know, that's what like makes it like really like feel real and feel physical. And we really try to push the models to to do those things. Well, it's so interesting because those moments are like the most screen cap moments. Like a character just like, you know, like a kind little gesture, you know, like a little hug, a little elbow, like characters just kind of looking at each other. Like people love that stuff. Um, it's it makes the characters just yeah they really come to feel life. real yeah um, and then Robbie is really cool in this one I feel <laughs> like he like he's just like oh, very mellow that. and you know he's doing his job to be intimidating you know <gasps> oh no the betrayal. betrayal I think I know that there's some episodes where um like you know Mabel like crosses over into being like a little too aggressive but i think she's got a good point in this episode i think Absolutely. her feeling betrayed Absolutely. by dipper feels super real to me um and like me and my sister never had a moment like this i think we both were over trick or treating at about the same time um but uh i i that had that looks dangerous <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I had moments like this with friends where you realize like this got friend's it. not into this anymore like and you're kind of right. This streetlight shot coming out. Oh like yeah, one this of the is best. this is all great. Good night, McGucket. At this point, was <laughs> was basically a feral possum in terms of his lo- level of his, uh, level of intelligence. Right, right, right. <laughs> like he was not there at all. And then I had him move like some sort of raccoon going up the car later on. I'm old man McGucket. This this great sca- uh, yeah, like Alonzo, you, you did a great. Oh, job. I see, I see. That's scam- right. That's right. <laughs> great posing of him scampering out of there. He comes a long way. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's great. Um, we uh. Oh, this is my favorite. 
It's a good shot. So it's creepy. Uh, so Jeff good. Glenn Bennett, the voice of the Summerween trickster. I think I literally said I want to get the guy who did Candle Jack in uh, Freakazoid, and so we just got the same oh, voice yeah. actor because oh, nice. I remember it being a great creepy voice. I love this voice. hand thing he keeps doing. It's great. Um, it, it was... Uh, I remember... Oh, yeah, this is super cool that he yeah. grows and these And this arms. section, uh, our director, Jen Ashima, did, did a did lot a really of great Chris, yeah. Chris Houghton, again, did an amazing job with the transformation stages. Yeah. That's hard yeah. to do. That's hard it's to super, do. It was something funny is I think literally every day I will, I will see a tweet where, or, or, or on, on Instagram or something where somebody says, I don't know if anyone noticed this, but this guy kind of <laughs> looks like No Face from Spirited Away. Uh, Literally, uh, everyone uh, notices. It's not an accident. It was on purpose. It's the worst we, kept secret. We, we just thought like we want something scary. What's something right. legitimately scary? And we knew that we wanted him to be made out of candy, so we knew that he could be anything, and we knew he needed a mask. So he started going that way anyway. So it's like right. fine. Like but he, I actually, use the I was also inspired by Evangelion. You know, okay. that helps. like the walk coming forward. You know, that was very like Eva oh. kind of had oh. the shoulders and stuff. I just want. Cool. Like I've just seen that image of a terrifying. Monster. I know exactly what you're talking um, about. This, this scene right here, where Dipper says, "Hey, are you okay?" Oh boy. Um, I remember me and Mike uh, Rianda, we wrote a bunch of different versions of the scene, and we realized it was best for her to say nothing, like because they they're they've got such a good relationship, they talk all the time that Mabel not not responding. I don't think there's a single other time in the series where somebody talks right. to her and she literally doesn't even look at them. And um, you know, like it she's shows mad. the depth of her. <laughs> like yeah, it yeah. just. Yeah, I think like there's only a few times in the series where like M Mabel really needs like reassurance and really needs like Dipper to like say something confident. because she's so yeah, confident yeah, yeah. and and I think this is one of the episodes where she backward. needed something from Dipper and luckily like there's that scene at the end where like it really they talk it out yeah. and they resolve their issues and their feelings. Well, and the the whole reason that we show that montage of them as kids growing up always in those costumes in the beginning was to set this up that like you know you want the, you want every character's motivation to feel believable and the idea that they've done this every single year every year they plan a group costume something they love something they celebrate something they take photos and dipper just on his own decided it's not happening anymore like i totally get that betrayal yeah and i, I think this really echoes the end of the series you know like yeah. it's all about growing up you know and this is the first time I, we're really asking yeah, those I, questions right he wants to grow up too fast she doesn't want to at i all. love how this scene is handled i love their heads are a little bit compressed and like it's tight and it's well boarded and very emotional we were thinking uh, our inspiration conceptually for this was uh, the kids in the kitchen in Jurassic Park. It, yes, absolutely. It's just like, yeah, absolutely. I feel it. You're I feel hiding it. and there's something great. creeping around. It's great. Um, this was a nice solution for how to get that. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, or a quick solution. Yeah. <laughs> running out of time. Yeah, That's yeah, it's, great. it works. That's great. That's great. It works. So I love their little shy guy. Um, this whole thing yeah. being also, I was really, really happy that we were able to figure out a way from a plot point <laughs> oh, of view. No, this thing. no. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those times where like Sue's. This is the do dumbest it. Seuss has this ever been. This is the been. dumbest Seuss, but I mean, we love it. It made it made Mike laugh so hard when we were in script <laughs> phase face. that Seuss is like, "Oh, I gotta get some batteries in this guy." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had fun drawing him <laughs> opening the batteries and putting them in. <laughs> He's the voice of a generation. Yes, we yes. love the uh, Seuss. We love the idea that Seuss laughs at those awful crypt keeper jokes. Like, mm, I'm yeah, dead yeah. serious. Like, oh my gosh, how did he think of Plus, that? Yeah, presses it one like, more Seuss time. Seuss is the only person who would think that that's a great joke. I was also really happy that we were able to think of a reason to have the episode final fight take place in a Halloween store. It's great. Right. Like just, to me, yeah. so much of my memories about Halloween are in that location. Those weapons. I mean, we all have it there, so we just might as well use it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It gives it gives each one of them a chance, a little chance to be a hero. Here's the reveal. It's coming up. So this was, I mean, I assume you guys have this memory as well. Maybe not you as much, Alonzo, uh, because you didn't go trick-or-treating, but like... There's some candy that just has always been. Oh bad. no, I know oh, yeah, about for that. Sure. <laughs> that hey, like, that's universal. Like wax yeah. lips, wax lips, gross, terrible. Don't like them. Leave chocolate out too long, it gets all weird and it gets that white powdery that's stuff exactly on it. Exactly how it looks like. Um, like, uh, like pretty much anything that's oh, got the teens. The teens came back in. Oh this. yeah, that was a nice little callback. It's the same teens. Um, Inconveniencing. from inconveniencing. Uh, they have names. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It was uh, oh, they, they're they're. I think their names are written. Either in Gravity Falls Journal number three or um, one of the online games, we came up with like canon names for them. But I, I can't think like the uh, at the time we were so hungry to create this lore for Gravity yes. Falls that we were all like trying to put in things and kind of like keep growing the 
the mythology of this. And I was so excited when I would see like a, a, something by a board artist that could like add to the continuity. This is our second alien stomach burster <laughs> it's just, it's joke in the episode. It's a payoff. Is it a payoff or is it just us doing the same joke twice? Set up, maybe. Pay. <laughs> This is all boarded Candy so blood. well. It's such a morbid thing that Seuss eats his way out of this monster. Um, and he I, enjoys it. <laughs> well, that's the thing is this monster has a remarkable amount of pathos. Like, I feel really bad for him. Which I, one of you guys boarded the um, the candy corn tears? Oh, that's Alonzo. That's, that's my favorite sure. joke in the whole episode. It's so good because it's, it's both sad and <laughs> ridiculous at the same time. Look, he, he, I didn't notice that that was a heart. That is a heart. Who did that? Yeah. Was that one of you or was that the prop designer? I think that was added Sammy. later on. Yeah, I, mean, I think one of our designers Bob, just, yeah. I didn't ask for that. I was surprised to discover him eating his heart, but I went with it. I was cool with Here it. Here comes his, uh, uh, his um, big, uh, this graduate The moment. graduate shot. Yeah. I was Nobody, about to say that. I got a lot of pushback on this that Stan finally scares them with his disgusting old man body. No, man, um, it's horrifying. And I was. they said you can get away with it if afterwards we show that he had his boxers we could still have oh that shot gosh. on the channel as long as as soon as we cut back to right now when he walks out he he's has got shorts boxers. absolutely yeah. um i was fine with that compromise because we still got to be chest. horrifying for a moment <laughs> um this <laughs> the, the, the movie in this the... movie on the background this movie is called the fear guy from terror town street yes that was we didn't have a name for that movie that was me and mike in the booth like i there's like a like probably a, a, a 15 minute tape of me going the fright fright cateers from spook mare avenue yes, friday so the fearteenth. like and we just finally wound up on the dumbest sounding one uh, um, Robbie is cool in this episode, but she reveals that he uh, ate a lollipop stick backwards and had to go to the hospital. I never got that. <laughs> it's just that he choked on it. Is that yeah. like it sounded like such a rad party, and then it was yeah, actually it's, super it's that lame. He was lame at the it's end. He was, he was lame. He's a big yeah, lame. Yeah. 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 And then uh, band great, the band super sweet. Also, I also yeah. got a note. I remember somebody saying, "Now at the end of the episode." Stan says that the real lesson is celebrating pure evil. Are we sure that's the messaging that Absolutely. we want in this episode? 100%. And I was like, yeah, it's a Halloween episode. Like, it's a, the whole point is for one day of the year, everybody gets to just, like, let the inner demon out and, like, we all celebrate it. And, like, that's why we go to, go to Disneyland, go to Haunted Mansion. Like, this is part of all storytelling. Like, yeah, we're celebrating evil for this episode. This has the greatest last line. I ate a man alive tonight. <laughs> Oh, what's the end tag? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the yeah, wild yeah, 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 yeah. With that the um, uh, Dolly Parton music, right? Yeah. No. Yes. 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 Dolly Parton's nine to five. Normally, they won't let us license music for this, but uh, I, I think our, was worth our editor Kevin Locaro uh, put this boy. in in the end tag, and it made us laugh so hard that like we just begged them, please let's shell out the absurd amount of money to get the rights for nine to five. Casual and Friday. I, yeah. I have no regrets. <laughs> that little butt. He's so cute. He's Genius a, man. He's a hungry he's little awesome. guy.